Do you ever wonder if your piano practice is as effective as it could be? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you how you can find out. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy's Piano Corner and I'm Tommy. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas about how to get the best from this great hobby. If this is your first visit here, then please do subscribe. All you need to do is click the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now. Every week I release a brand new piano related video for you to enjoy. If you'd have asked me last week whether or not I practiced in an effective way, I'd have said, oh yes, and I'd have honestly believed what I was saying. I mean, first of all, I have a very well-defined practice plan. I've taken the time to set myself goals in all the pieces that I'm working on, work out the difficult parts, work out exercises that I want to do to try and improve those parts, and I generally follow that plan each day. Secondly, I've also done a lot of research into the topic of practice in piano and I've tried to implement as many of the tips and ideas that I've found as I possibly can. And thirdly, I regularly record my playing. I listen back to it quietly to make sure that it sounds as I imagine it sounds when I'm practicing. To be able to do this, I even went as far as building the functionality into my homemade practice app on my iPad, so I can simply plug in my microphone, press record, and then play songs to listen back to later. So surely with all of these things, I must be practicing effectively. Certainly I'm practicing better than I ever used to. I realized in fact that I'm not actually practicing half as effectively as I'd imagined. This realization came one day when I decided to record myself practicing. Now, of course, I record myself playing quite frequently. I sometimes record to post on Facebook. I record my playing so I can see how a piece sounds properly, because you can never quite tell when you're playing. You can't listen as well as when you're listening back to a recording. So one Saturday afternoon, I just thought, right, I'm going to record my practice today. I'm just going to see how things are sounding and if I'm getting where I need to get with the exercises that I'm doing. I had not really thought about doing the recording from the point of view of actually monitoring my practice per se. Liszt very famously said, you should think 10 times and then play once. Advice that I would thought I was following, to be honest. Also in Graham Fitch's ebook series on piano practice, he makes the point quite frequently that when you practice, you should be listening to how it sounds, you should be making sure you correct the problems that are there, and allowing a feedback loop all the time so that you're constantly reviewing what you're doing. Again, this is advice that I thought I was following. So then you can imagine my surprise when, when I was watching back, this is what I saw. As you can see, I don't think I even thought once, never mind 10 times. I played it wrong, then immediately played it wrong again, and then immediately played it wrong again. This is a classic case of simply practicing wrong notes. You might remember I posted a video on this some time ago, so I assume that this was a lesson that now I learned. Clearly, not as well as I thought. Basically, I was sitting at the piano and actually reinforcing those mistakes rather than fixing them. There was not a pause, not even a second to consider what was wrong. No attempt to work out what was tripping me up. Why did I keep repeating this mistake? I just carried on repeating it. However, what surprised me the most was if you'd have asked me, do I ever sit there when I'm practicing and simply keep repeating wrong notes? I would have said most definitely not. Hmm. I highly recommend that you try this out for yourself. One day, just get your phone or your camera, whatever you normally use to record yourself, 
stick it on a tripod, press record, sit down and practice. Now, don't do anything that you wouldn't normally do. There's no point trying to fool yourself and try and make it look better than it is. Just forget that the camera's running, sit down and practice as you would normally practice. Then, later on, find yourself a quiet corner, sit down and watch it. But don't watch it from the point of view of how you're playing. Watch it from the point of view of how are you actually practicing. So, for example, if you think that you do a lot of hand separate practice, do you? Is it true? You might find that you do maybe 10, 20, 30 seconds hand separate, then go straight back to hands together again. Similarly, you might think you're doing lots of slow practice. But on the other hand, you might find when you watch it back that, okay, so yeah, you might start slow, but within a few bars, you're almost back up to performance tempo without even realizing it. Of course, before you beat yourself up too much, don't forget to congratulate yourself on the things that you're actually doing well during your practice time. I was very pleased to notice that there were actually many things that I tried to implement as part of my practice routine that I was actually sticking to quite successfully. So it's not that I was completely wasting my time, it's just that it could have been better. Then finally, write down everything that was either good or bad about your practice session, and then before you practice the next time, have a read through your list and remind yourself what you found. Of course, as a bonus, you can now also use this recording to listen to your playing as well. It can be good, of course, to spot things early on in the learning process, you know, long before a piece is good enough that you might record it so you can listen to it played back. You know, you can check your phrasing, both hands separately and at slow tempos. You can listen carefully to the voicing. Is it everything that we imagined it was going to be? You can listen to the evenness, are there jerky, jumpy little sections. You can also study the score at the same time and see if you are in fact playing all the right notes in the correct order. I've decided that at least once a week now, I'm going to record my entire practice session end to end so that I can watch it back and just keep a check on myself that I'm doing what it is I think that I'm doing when I practice. Of course, if you're looking for ideas of how to practice, then I do highly recommend Graham Fitch's ebook series that I did a review on recently. You'll get these on Amazon or on Graham's website. And also, if you're looking for repertoire choices to help you in your piano journey, then there's Melanie Spanswick's Play It Again Piano series, also excellent value. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click that little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.